Johan Blake shines as Megan Tapper struggles in Ostrava. Welcome back to the channel, people. Welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time here, thank you for making it Peter Lloyd World. Now go ahead, please hit the subscribe button so we can continue to grow. When you do that, go ahead and hit the notification bell so you know when the next video drops, which is about once a day here on Peter Lloyd World. Also, if you enjoy the content, please hit that like button. And finally, leave your thoughts after this sports analysis where we take a look at and break down the races. And after this, we take a look at your comments. So stay until the end. You just might hear from yourself. When you're ready? Yeah, good to go. Jamaica's Johan Blake almost broke the 10-second barrier at the recently held Ostrava Meet, the fifth World Athletics Continental Tour. The starting lineup included Reese Prescott, Johan Blake, Zarnell Hughes, Akani Simbini, Yopun Abe Kuhn, Elijah Hall, Jan Velibe and Danique. I'm sure that's not how the gentleman's name is pronounced, but I can't find a reference. Oh, there was some disappointment here because the world's fastest out of Kenya was not in the lineup. But as you can see, they broke relatively even. And right up until the 30 meter mark, the race was still even. Uh, Johan Blake then made a move at about the 40 meter mark and started to inch away. We thought at this point that he would have he had gotten it, but in the end, he was uh, clipped on the line by the actual winner. In the end, it was Reese Prescott of the Great Britain who won in a time, an impressive time of 9.93 with Blake. Johan Blake trading with 10 in second with 10.05. Zarnell Hughes ran 10.05. Also, uh, Kani uh, Simbini ran 10.06. Yupun Abe Kuhn ran 10.08, as did Elijah Hall, the same 10.08. Uh, Kuhn in, uh, in fifth, uh, Hall in sixth. Uh, Jan ran 10.44 uh, to take seventh, and uh, Dinik ran uh, 10.47 to take the eighth place now the reason why we say that um because you're gonna some of you're gonna ask why is it that we use the word shine it's because this is the closest he has run to 10 seconds thus far for the season um 10.05 is an impressive run at this time of the year uh we did see him run his, his previous season's best had been 10 11 that he had set earlier i believe at the velocity fest yes all saying well for this 100 final johan blake on a boil of champagne a king blake is there it's run goes in his play well a king blake has the lead on his own johan blake 10-0-9-4 a king so his previous best had been this 10.11 which he, when he came second to akeem blake now Johan Blake has been sort of struggling. He's, he's not gotten under that 10 second barrier since the season started. Um, last year, he dipped below the 10 second barrier uh, four times. He has not done that thus far this year. So we are hoping for something, for, for something special from him. Now, at the same meet, Megan Tapa seemed to be struggling, um, searching, I would use the word, uh, to find her form because she just didn't. In the women's 100 meters hurdles, Tapa struggled uh, and ended in the sixth position. The winner was Camacho Quinn of um, Puerto Rico and in second place was Pia of Poland. Um, Camacho Quinn won in a time of 12.56. Now, one of the reasons why we use the word struggle, I mean, we are big fans here of Megan Tapper. Uh, this field was not the best field, you know. I mean, I think outside of, I would say, Camacho Quinn and maybe the young lady from um, Poland, Pia. I mean, this was an average field, but uh, Tapper seemed to struggle from the start. 
uh, which is unusual for her. She normally has immaculate form. She got out of the box late at the start is gone but up until about the third hurdle as you can see here she, the field was still relatively even um, at this point is when we would normally see Tapper um, move ahead but instead the reverse happened she started to move uh, backwards which is you know which which made me wonder if maybe she was a matter of fitness um, not proper mental conditioning so she ended up running sixth in this race and this is not normal for her um, I do think that, of course, it's still relatively early, early in the season. And in fact, Megan Tapper's time was 13.12, which was really not her best. Uh, 12.56 for Camacho Quinn is okay. Uh, Pia did a personal best running that 12.65 near Ali of the US ran third in 12.69. Um, I know it might sound harsh for me to use the term struggle, but it's just unusual to see her run like this. Now, at her opening opening 100 meter hurdles race at the National Stadium, she just do it. So I know that some of you are going to say why the word shine. I'm going to say it again. Uh, 10.05 is a good look at this time of year. We're hoping that he's, he's able to dip below that 10 second barrier, which would be very good for him. And you know, we are a positive, we're positive people here at Peter Lloyd World, so we're always hoping for the best. And he did look very good at the beginning of the season. I still think he's a little top heavy. This is just my personal opinion. And he seems to struggle in the last 10 meters of the race, which is unusual for him. But a 10.05 with an okay, I mean, this was not a stellar lineup either, was, was okay. So he did do well, and it looks like he's inching to that 10 second barrier. Megan Tapper had an amazing season last year. Um, she just seems to be, she seems to be uh, struggling to find form this year. That's what I mean. I don't mean it as a negative. She's just not running with the kind of, you know, with the, uh, our technique still looks good, but she's simply not at her best. Of course, this is just my two cents. Now, let's take a look at your comments. Nicole, Queen Nicole Magic says, King Peter, your Queen Nicole, feeling the goose pimples again. No, in my opinion, Megan is not our greatest hurdler, but she's certainly our most grateful because she makes me celebrate her brands like it's a goal. <laughs> that's, that's an interesting, I never even thought about that perspective. King uh, Patrick Thomas wrote about Johan Blake. Peter, what you don't understand, Blake is running about two class down so he can do anything. Watching the race, he's not under any pressure coming uh, off the turn. He looked heavy with all those muscles last two seasons. He, have, he had doing the same thing, beating up a, a pair when he reached the international scene. He's struggling with the big guy. I don't really see him back yet. Uh, well, that's an interesting perspective also that I actually respect, Vic. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button so we can continue to grow. Hit the notification bell. If you enjoy the content, hit that like button. Leave your comments. It's really important to the algorithms. Remember, you are kings and queens. Never forget this. We love you. Bless up!